Hey everybody, and welcome back to the Captain's Table. I am your host, Captain Beanard, and the topic of discussion today is going to be a review and reflection of my Pokemon Sword and Shield Wi-Fi Battle series. So, I'm going to do this the same way that I always do. I'm going to go over a bunch of stats that I've collected about uh, all of my Pokemon battles here on Sword and Shield, now that those have come to a close. And, uh, yeah, just make a bunch of uh, comments and look back on everything that's occurred here in Gen 8 thus far. So, uh, business as usual here with one of these recap videos. So, uh, yeah, without further ado, uh, we're going to go ahead and actually jump right into it this time. Um, I do want to offer some generic comments first and foremost. I do want to say that I ended up having a lot more fun with Sword and Shield than I initially thought that I would. Uh, the campaign mode was very solid, and um, even the... Uh, Expansion Pass, the DLC, the Isle of Armor, and the Crown Tundra, though those were kind of a ripoff as far as like price tag versus content, I will say that they were very fun, and it was uh, nice that they added a bunch of Pokemon back, and at the end of the day, we got up to about roughly two-thirds of all Pokemon uh, that were available in this game, uh, which is not terrible. Uh, so yeah, um, do have pretty positive feelings about Sword and Shield uh, overall, Generation 8 overall, and um, that carried into the Wi-Fi Battle series as well, uh, despite the fact that we have a pretty... Um, unfortunate circumstance of the 20-minute timer in Wi-Fi Battles, which has played a factor in a lot of my games, both the fun games and the league games, uh, more specifically the league games. But um, despite that, uh, I still had a lot of fun doing Wi-Fi Battles on these games, and um, yeah, I guess the only thing I would really change would be that 20-minute timer. I think that if they could increase that to even like 25 minutes or 30 minutes, although unfortunately we do have Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl now, and we know that's not the case, unfortunately. Um, but even a minor increase on the timer would make a huge difference as far as the uh, viability of the singles Wi-Fi battles go. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, a lot of positive feelings about the game overall. So having said that, um, I believe we are going to go ahead and uh, get into uh, the actual topic here. Uh, I just wanted to get that off my chest first, but um, we're going to go ahead and get into uh, talking about the Wi-Fi Battle series. So we have some general stats on the board uh, first and foremost. So I uh, as you probably know if you've been following the Wi-Fi Battle series, I had a total of 115 battles here on Sword and Shield, uh, because I do number them, pretty easy to keep track of that. Yeah, um, so 102 of those were singles matches, 12 of those were VGC matches, and only one of those was a multi-battle. So, um, reason for that is the single battle is really the standard uh, in my opinion in my experience and in my um, practice for Pokemon battling. It's what I enjoy the most, so that's kind of what I do the most. The VGC battles, I've never done those before prior to this generation, so I decided to dabble into those a little more in this generation, specifically because I wanted a little bit of variation of content on the channel, and because multi-battles really weren't that viable in this generation. Um, so yeah, the uh, 12 VGC games were uh, kind of fun. Um, not really my forte, but the good thing about those is that they do really dodge the uh, timer problem that I talked about a little bit ago. So that was uh, definitely a positive thing about those. And then unfortunately, uh, we were only able to squeeze in one multi-battle this generation. And there were a number of different reasons for that, actually. Um, this is And this is probably the most disappointing stat that I have uh, because I used to really enjoy multi-battles back on uh, pretty much all the DS games on uh, ORAS, on Sun and Moon, and then on uh, USUM. Um, but unfortunately, in this generation, uh, the big thing that really killed multi-battling was the lack of the versus recorder. So uh, not being able to save your battles and forcing everything to be a live narration, essentially, really handicapped the multi-battle scene for me because that 
that means that you have to not only strategize, but you have to narrate battles live. And that is a lot to do. And um, unfortunately, I only ended up having one multi-battle here on uh, Sword and Shield, and it was kind of a mess um, because I was trying to coordinate with my partner while simultaneously trying to narrate the match and be entertaining and all that stuff. So it didn't really work out that well. And um, the other factor that plays into there being really no multi-battles this generation is that uh, most of the people that I used to multi-battle with either don't play Pokemon anymore or don't play Pokemon as much. So they weren't really available. So coordinating with uh, other people to get multi-battles going was a lot more difficult this generation. But um, we probably could have made that work if not for the, the whole lack of the versus recorder and everything having to be a live narration. Um, so people really weren't into that either. Um, so yeah, that is, that is unfortunate. I am disappointed that I uh, wasn't able to do more multi-battles and that... Um, you know, just the way that the game mechanics evolved kind of made it very not conducive to multi-battling, um, but it kind of just is what it is. Uh, moving along, so of those 15 games, or sorry, 115 games, I should say, I had 84 wins and 31 losses, which brings me to a win percentage of about 73%, which um, is actually pretty good in my opinion, and uh, I will say the same thing as I've said for all of these recap videos, is that, well, yes, technically, you're probably thinking I could make my uh, winning percentage really whatever I wanted because it's my channel and I choose what battles I post. And while that's technically true, I try to post an accurate representation of how well the teams that I build do. And as far as league games, you guys will know that I do upload all league games that happen, win or lose, uh, no matter how good or bad they might be. So I feel that that is an accurate representation of how well I do in Wi-Fi battling, generally speaking. Um, obviously I can't post every game that I have, but I will say that most of the games that I have do get posted. Um, but yeah, uh, I am happy with that. I am happy with my performance overall at this game. I'm not going to say I never make mistakes, um, cause obviously I do, but, um, overall I'm pretty happy with, uh, how well I play the game, although there's always room for improvement. And uh, last thing on this page is uh, we've had 98 different opponents here on uh, Sword and Shield, and then we used 89 different Pokemon. So a couple of things to note, uh, especially compared to the last series I did, which was Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, this is something that I found kind of funny and that I didn't even realize until I was going over uh, the old stuff in preparation to do this video, is that I actually had the same win percentage on uh, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon that I have here on Sword and Shield, so I thought that was kind of funny that that worked out that way. Um, but additionally, I actually played uh, more different opponents on this game despite having significantly less uh, Wi-Fi battles on this game. So I think that just speaks to the fact that I had a lot of rematches, or a lot more rematches, I should say, on uh, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon than I ended up having on Sword and Shield here, uh, primarily because, as I kind of mentioned before, a lot of the people that I tended to have a lot of games with either uh, don't play Pokemon as much or at all anymore, or just not really available as much or at all to battle. So I ended up uh, having a lot more random opponents, uh, which worked out okay. Um, but I do like to get rivalries going here because it, you know, makes things more entertaining. But kind of is what it is. And then Pokemon count uh, is less, but uh, given that we had less battles, it kind of evens out, I think. Although we did have less games per team in this generation than we had in the prior generation. Um, so... Yeah, um, I think that sums all of that up pretty well. So, moving along, we are going to take a look at those opponents and exactly who they were. So, 
Um, I listed off my opponents here. Uh, first page, we're going to look at all the opponents that made multiple appearances in the Sword and Shield Wi-Fi Battle Series. So at the top of the heap, you can see is our old friend slash rival, the infamous Joey Fontaine, making six appearances total here in the series. And uh, the numbers next to the names will indicate, uh, first, the amount of times that I defeated them in battles, second, how many times they defeated me, and then if there is a third number for one individual of course there is uh, that will be uh, the amount of times we teamed up in a multi-battle so obviously since we only had one multi-battle we only had one partner for a multi-battle so um, following Joey at the top of the list of course we have um, Adam aka Southside Braves who is a newer friend of ours um, who we've collabed with a few times uh, good guy uh, cranks out solid content on his channel. Uh, then we have Joshi, a.k.a. Pokey Trainer Joshi, a, a tried-and-true uh, content creator and uh, battler and friend, although um, he actually uh, is creating a lot more content for a lot of different video games over on his channel these days. Doesn't play as much Pokemon as he used to, uh, but he is still floating around with Pokemon as well. Uh I think he actually changed his channel to Simply Joshi now, since he does a lot more games, uh, not just Pokemon. So then, uh, following that, we also have uh, Crash, a.k.a. CrashLove37, my old pal IRL, uh, who, once again, um, he's doing a lot of different video games now, uh, not just Pokemon, although he does a little bit of Pokemon. And those guys all clocked in at three appearances each. And then it kind of just filters down from there. We have um, a couple of people who we've played multiple times in Draft League, a couple of people who are uh, friends in real life. And then we get all the way to the bottom. And we have that one uh, multi-battle, which, of course, uh, have to shout out my partner in this one multi-battle. Um, that is Sam, a.k.a. Feltswild, who... A uh, quick plug for Feltswild. Uh, we have been doing quite a bit of Fortnite streaming over on her Twitch channel, and will continue to do so. So if any of you guys watching this are fans of Fortnite, come watch us attempt to try and take on the sweaties and get some dubs over on Fortnite at twitchtv.com. Com. I'm sorry, that is twitch.tv slash Feltswild. I always get that wrong because I'm a YouTube guy, not a Twitch guy. But I digress. And I think that actually covers it for this page. So... Moving along, we have... Uh, that's not what I wanted... That's what I wanted. All right, so technical difficulty, but we're just going to roll with it because I'm already too far into this thing to start over, and I don't have good editing software. Anyway, so we're going to... Actually, no, that's not right either. So... What in the heck? I don't know what happened here, actually. Let me try to figure it out. Did I forget? I think I may have forgotten to add a couple of my images, unfortunately. So, that is not right. Uh, yeah, so that is partially right. So, we are going to shoot from the hip on the fly in real time here. There we go. There is the second to next screen that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, we're really testing my editing skills here, which is not a good thing. 
but I think it's actually working better than I thought. Awesome. So we're just going to uh, pretend that that whole interlude never happened and move on in talking about my opponents here on Sword and Shield. So the uh, next laundry list I have here are opponents that I faced only one time that I defeated. So uh, as you can see, most of these people are um, just people who I played randomly online. Um, yeah, so they are uh, mostly just randos. There's a couple people in here that I know. Um, and there are, if you see uh, a number in brackets, and this is something that I failed to mention on the previous slide, um, if you see a number in brackets, not in parentheses, but in brackets, that indicates that there were two people, two different opponents with the same name, and the number in the bracket will indicate the um, numbered battle that I faced them in. So... Um, yeah, hope that's not too confusing, <laughs> but um, yeah. So the so again, these are this is the laundry list of people that I uh, had one game with and defeated them, uh, and it is quite the laundry list. Um, so I guess I don't really have too much else to say about that. Uh, it just kind of uh, I suppose is what it is. Um, I would have liked to have um, more. I guess, rematches with people, although when you have a match against a rando online, you're never going to realistically have a rematch with them. So um, that is, I guess, one thing is I would have liked to make more of an effort to have uh, more rematches with more different opponents. Um, that's something that I uh, didn't really get to do as much of as I wanted, but kind of just is what it is. So... Moving along, we are going to come to the next list, and that is going to be a much shorter list of opponents who I had one game with who defeated me. So uh, most of these people are, um, again, just randoms offline. Um, some from draft leagues, as, again, I forgot to mention in the prior list, uh, some of those people were draft league opponents as well. Some of these are as well. Um, the name in the middle in parentheses that says Japanese boy, that is actually an opponent who had a name that was, I think, in Japanese, and I don't speak Japanese, so I can't really do any better than that, but I did want to identify that uh, player, that opponent that I had, so that's the best I could come up with. Um, but yeah, um, and then again, um, you know, just uh, some people, some mostly random people here, um, particularly with people who defeated me the first time around, I definitely would have uh, liked to be able to get a rematch against uh, some of them just to kind of try to redeem myself, but um, unfortunately, that was not uh, the case. As I mentioned, getting rematches against randoms you play online is pretty difficult, if not impossible. So um, just kind of is what it is there. Um, but yeah, I don't think I really have anything else to say about that. All that stuff is pretty self-explanatory, pretty straightforward. So moving along now uh, that we're back on track, we are going to come to the list of Pokemon that I used here on Sword and Shield. So um, this first page uh, of Pokemon is going to list off the Pokemon that I used um, the most times, starting at the top and filtering down. And um, of course, at the top of this list, we are going to have my man, the de facto team captain of the Philadelphia Pidgeys. That is Gudra clocking in at 34 appearances in 34 different battles. That is uh, the number next to the Pokemon's name, of course, uh, being the number of battles that I use them in. And now an important note for this stat is that I don't count... Uh, a battle in which I bring a Pokemon to the battle, but they don't make an appearance that I actually don't switch them in and use them in the game. I don't count that as me having used that Pokemon in that game. That might be a little weird, but that's the way I've always done it. So, as I mentioned, Gudra at the top with 34 appearances. Uh, that is so much higher than every other Pokemon that I used here on Sword and Shield, mainly because 
Uh, Gudra, as I mentioned, is on all of my renditions of the Philadelphia Pidgeys. We were in three draft leagues in uh, Sword and Shield, so as you can imagine, that adds a lot of games that I used Gudra in. Clocking in second, we have Alolan Ninetales, um, and that appeared in 21 different games. Again, I believe I drafted it in two of those three draft leagues here. Um, and, the, you know, just another uh, Pokemon um, that made a lot of appearances, and it kind of filters down from there. Um, as you can see, filtering down, um, hitting about, um, you know, obviously the farther down we go, generally speaking, on the list, you get to... Uh, more Pokemon having made that same number of appearances. So um, it was an interesting and I guess kind of weird thing this generation as opposed to uh, the other generations that I ended up having a lot more random battles and a lot more uh, stuff like that going on that wasn't quite as structured as what I normally do here on the channel. Um, I made a lot of like half teams and used them in a bunch of random battles um, because I didn't really want to make a whole team. So I would just make like half a team and then crank some games out and then just be like, oh, I should have just made a whole team and then make another half of a team and just kind of keep going like that. Or I'd make like one Pokemon and want to use it in a few games. Um, so yeah, I did a lot more of that kind of stuff in this game, which skews the numbers for each individual Pokemon usage kind of upward uh, because I only had, I believe, it was, It ended up being 13 different teams in, uh, 13 different full teams, I should say, in Sword and Shield, uh, and I had five games per team with all of those, except for the last team, as you guys will uh, probably remember since it happened very recently, I only had... Um, three games with that team because I wanted to kind of wrap up Sword, Sword and Shield uh, since BDSP was already out and is already out. But yeah, I think that pretty well uh, covers all of that. So then we have uh, the next page of Pokemon that I use, uh, the rest of them, and as you can see, it filters down. There are a lot of Pokemon that made around uh, six and five appearances uh, in the Wi-Fi battle series here, simply because, as I mentioned, that was uh, it was typically five games per uh, team. So that's kind of why. And then if a Pokemon you know appeared in like one other random battle as opposed to that, that kind of pumps them up to six. So yeah, um, and then it kind of uh, filters all the way to the bottom with uh, the one Pokemon that I will shout out at the very bottom of the list being the only Pokemon to make only a mere two appearances in the Wi-Fi Battle series, and that being Sharpedo. So um, really the only thing that all these Pokemon have in common, as I've mentioned before, are just Pokemon that I like mostly. Pokemon that I like to use that I think are interesting. Um, I try to get a good spread of uh, tiers of types of pretty much the whole nine yards uh, because I think that's what makes things more fun at the end of the day. It gets really old really fast if all you're using is OU Pokemon. Shout out to Joey Fontaine. Sorry, I had to do it. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, it just it, it's not as fun by a long shot. So I try to use lower tier Pokemon. Um, or mid-tier Pokemon, generally speaking. I try not to use quite that much uh, in the OU tier. Um, but yeah, I think that that makes things more fun. I also try to mix-match my team, so I won't just make up like a straight OU team. I'll maybe, in a team, I'll have like a, like one OU and like maybe two UUs and like two RUs and then like a PU or something. So I, I try to get a nice spread. I just... I like to be original with my teams and, uh, you know, maybe not quite as much with my sets, but definitely with the combinations that I use, I try to be as original as possible and I try to get a good spread of everything because I think that that yields the highest entertainment for you guys. So, um, but yeah, I think that pretty well covers that. So... Moving on, we are going to come to uh, Pokemon Breakdown by type. So um, 
we're going to see how many of which type of Pokemon I used. So at the top, you can see the same thing that is always at the top of everything because I always have one of these on every single team that I build, and that is water. So I used 14 different water types. Um, it is one of my favorite types. It pairs well with so many other types, uh, that it, and there's just so many water Pokemon. I believe their water is the type with the most Pokemon in, at least I know that was the case uh, as of like a generation or so ago. I believe that is still the case as of right now. Um, yeah, so there's just so many different water Pokemon that it's just so easy to use. Um, they pair well with everything, so... Yeah, it uh it works really well. Then we have uh, electric fighting, fire and flying, clocking in at uh, ten apiece. Uh, again, more types that I like to use. Uh, strong types. There's a lot of variety to them, and then it just kind of filters down from there, all the way till the bottom, uh, bringing up the rear as it always is, and that is the ice type that I only used four different Pokemon of that type. So. Um, that is kind of the same as always, simply because Ice is, objectively speaking, uh, the worst type defensively, and uh, so most Ice-type Pokemon, there are actually, I'm not positive, I believe, again, as of a generation or so ago, there were the fewest Ice-type Pokemon of all. Um, I'm not sure if that's still true, although I think it is. Um, but yeah, they're also not great defensively and there's not a lot of them. So yeah, that kind of is why that's always at the bottom of the list. But, um, a little bit of jumps from, uh, generations past. Although again, I try to get a good spread of different types of Pokemon to try and maximize entertainment for you guys and also maximize the fun of playing, uh, for myself. So, um, I don't really have, uh, much of anything else to say about that. So moving on, we're going to do a Pokemon breakdown by generation. So at the top, you can see I actually used the most different Pokemon from Generation 8 here on Sword and Shield. And that was definitely by design because I was actually, as I mentioned at the top of this video, a very big fan of Generation 8 of Sword and Shield, not just for the gameplay, but also for the new Pokemon. They introduced quite a lot of good Pokemon in this generation, in my opinion. So a lot of Pokemon that I wanted to try out and use for the first time, and so I really geared um, the Pokemon I used in the competitive Wi-Fi battles toward that because I really wanted to get a lot of uh, use in from these new Pokemon. So uh, that's at the top of the heap with uh, 23 of those. And actually, I think it would even be more because I believe uh, the way that I crunched the numbers, and I think I might change this in the future, but I've done this uh, this way, I think in every uh, one of these recap videos that I've done is I if a Pokemon debuted in a generation, but their regional variant debuted in another generation, and I use even if I use the regional variant, I believe I still count that as an appearance uh, as a Pokemon from the you know from the first generation that it appeared in. So what I mean by that is if I use like a Galarian form. Uh, of a Pokemon that uh, debuted in Generation 8, but the Pokemon originally debuted in Generation 1, I believe I counted that toward the Gen 1 count, so if I adjust for that, it's probably closer to like 30, I want to say, definitely closer to 30, I think, uh, Generation 8 Pokemon I used, so just a lot of Generation 8 Pokemon, um, because I like them, and I wanted to, uh, you know, just use some new stuff. Um, then from there, we got Generation 1 with 20 Pokemon from that, and again, it just kind of filters down from there all the way to uh, Generation 2 and Generation 6 tied at uh, 6 Pokemon each at the bottom. Um, I think mainly just because uh, I believe Gen 6 was the smallest generation, and uh, Gen 2, there's not a lot of great ones out of that, in my opinion, um, so I think that's probably why... Uh, they usually fall toward the bottom. And again, like I think these stats remain mostly consistent, although I believe in games past I ended up using a lot more Gen 5 Pokemon, and this time around not so much. Um, but yeah, speaking of that, um, and this was something that I was going to throw in in an earlier slide, but I forgot about, so I just stuck it in at the end here. Um, 
that is uh, of the 89 total Pokemon that I used in this game on Sword and Shield, 43 of them were Pokemon that I had never used before in competitive battling, and t uh, 46 of them were Pokemon that I brought back from prior Wi-Fi battle series. So a little less than half were Pokemon that I've never used before, and that runs with the theme of, uh, like I mentioned, 23 Generation 8 Pokemon um, that I used. So, um, yeah, that was, uh, just something that I really wanted to do in this generation was I wanted to use a lot of new Pokemon, a lot of different Pokemon. I wanted to branch out and I wanted to just have more fun with it. I didn't want to just keep using the same old stuff over and over again. Um, and I'm happy that I did that and I am, uh, happy with the way that that worked out. So... That is going to bring us to the end. So, um, closing remarks here. I will say, I will reiterate once again, I had a lot of fun with the Sword and Shield Wi-Fi Battle series. Uh, it treated me pretty well. Um, I don't really have too much negative to say about it outside of the 20-minute timer, which I've covered extensively both on this video and on others, so I won't uh, bore you guys about ranting about that anymore. Um, but yeah, I am... Uh, Looking forward to, at this point, um, though I did have a good time on Sword and Shield, I am looking forward to closing the book on that at this point. Um, obviously, as I mentioned before, there will be no more Sword and Shield Wi-Fi battles, which means, of course, uh, you guys already know this, uh, we're going to be getting into BDSP Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battles at some point. So, an update on that. Um... So I did mention this before, I did get uh, BDSP, I did beat it, at this point I've beaten it, and I'm going through the post game at this point, still you know playing it, collecting things, having a good time with it. I'm not going to give you guys my full opinion on that game just yet, because similarly to what I did last time uh, that I ended a battle series prior to starting a new battle series. Um, the next episode of the Captain's Table coming out is going to be a full-blown review and reaction to uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, where I will have at least one uh, guest with me to talk about that. So, uh, yeah, I will say I am planning on starting the BDSP Wi-Fi battle series probably around the start of the new year, uh, simply because I'm not 100% sure how it's going to work as far as uh, making competitive Pokemon, and unless I have somebody gen for me, it might be quite the uh, tough road to uh, walk to try and get a bunch of uh, good competitive Pokemon. So, yeah, um, that, that might take a little bit of time, but I am planning on getting the BDSP Wi-Fi Battle Series out to you guys uh, sooner rather than later, within the next few weeks, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, I think that uh, pretty well covers it. Um, so, yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me ramble uh, about all of the things that went down here on Sword and Shield, and I hope you guys are looking forward to the future, which is the BDSP Wi-Fi Battle series, as well as more episodes of The Captain's Table to come. So, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching again, everybody. Hope you all enjoyed. Please hit that like button, uh, comment, subscribe, share the video, all that good stuff if you did enjoy, and stay tuned for more new videos in the future. So, that's it, and we'll see you next time.